I've owned my Colchester Triumph 2000 lathe for a number of years now and I love it, it's a great machine. But one thing I have not challenged myself with is to actually do a full oil change. I've been maintaining it but I've never done a full swap out of the oil. There are actually two oil types that the machine uses. It has three reservoirs, two in the headstock. There's the main headstock reservoir which feeds most of the uh, gears and it takes a Telus 27 oil. And then there's another type of oil used in the apron which services the carriage and the, uh, the, the main lead screw. Unfortunately, neither of those two oils actually exist today. They've been long replaced by Shell. So I rang Shell's technical support to get some idea of which oils I should use in, in replacing those oils. Shell recommended two different types. For Telus 27, they recommended Telus S2M32 as a replacement. This has the same weight and same viscosity as the original oil. For the apron, Toner 33 has been replaced with Toner S3M68. Another mouthful, but this particular oil is the exact same uh, qualities in terms of uh, longevity, wear features and viscosity, weight, etc. So it makes a perfect replacement. I started by disconnecting the electrical services and then removing the covers of the uh, headstock area. It's not totally necessary to take this bottom one off, but I did just so I could get a better understanding of how the oil system works. The main tank sits at the bottom of this area and the filler area is in the upper section. This is the main port where the oil is normally filled to this line and it's actually quite low at this point. This tube leads all the way to the top and as it does it, it, it's actually powered by an impeller uh, to the main motor where it drives the oil up into the headstock and into the viewports. So to begin the oil change process I decided to start with the big main tank and it has a plug at the bottom uh, which needed a bit of convincing to get off since it hadn't been uh, probably removed since the day it was installed. The oil that came out was quite black initially and then quickly went clear so I'm hopeful that, that that's not damage to the gear train but more just general age and settlement of particulates over time. It took several containers before I finally drained this reservoir and to prevent oil from getting on my hands I ended up uh, putting on some gloves just to protect myself. Shell did reassure me that there's no health issues associated with this particular general purpose hydraulic oil. Uh, however, you know, you shouldn't get it on your skin and if you do, you probably should wash it off immediately. So while the machine was draining of oil, it took quite some time, I decided to take the headstock cover off and just take a peek into the actual gear train since I'd never actually seen it in person. So it's a bit of an exploration as well as perhaps a, a bit of a cleaning exercise as well. Someone had actually used some sort of uh, sealant around, around the edges to kind of seal in the oil to prevent it from splashing out in the gap. I did find that there was a lot of gunk sort of settling in little areas so I decided to just clean that out with a paper towel and just to remove as much of the, um, the fines that were left inside along the walls. I was very careful not to get anything into the bearings which are exposed on the side so I was deliberately avoiding placing contaminants into the, the headstock. I spent a bit of time just exploring how the gears worked and uh, uh, get a better understanding how the cam action worked which I found fascinating. It's an absolute amazing clockwork piece of engineering. And at the same time just inspect all the teeth just to make sure that uh, nothing had broken or had worn unnecessarily in a bad way. And I was happy to say that uh, everything checked out rather well. So from what I could tell uh, I have a, a very good, good system here. After much pondering and seeing just how much stuff had actually settled, I decided to use some degreaser and to flush out areas rather than me using a paper towel or introducing other particulate matter into the system, I wanted to just flush out what I could with a very sort of carefully directed stream of degreaser. And I found this to be really useful in places where you'd really have to disassemble a machine to actually get to, com to the walls or the components below it. It's quite dense. The degrees it does splash around a bit so definitely wear uh, glasses, protective glasses when you're doing this because it will splash up in your face as you go and work along, it's unavoidable.
Somewhere along the line, someone had placed some sort of sealant uh, between the headstock cover and the actual head itself. It had dribbled into the oil chamber around and on the edges here as I'm pointing. It basically was impossible to remove that now uh, and I felt that uh, doing so would actually possibly put contaminants into the oil chamber so I've left that but everything else has been cleaned up as the best I possibly could. After letting the degreaser just sort of drain out of the bottom, I flushed out any sort of remaining contaminants with some fresh oil and began the process of getting rid of the degreaser as well. This also helped to re-oil components at the very top of the headstock that had been cleaned dry essentially and uh, once that sort of flowed through clean through the bung, I then closed up the bung and began the process of actually filling the entire headstock with fresh oil. This is a fairly lengthy process uh, I felt was best done from the top directly from the top rather than actually using the filler tube because it would put fresh oil over the bearings and all the mechanisms uh, associated with the top end of the unit thereby guaranteeing to make sure that they had been properly oiled before uh, starting up the machine to help uh, see that the level of oil was at, I put a very clean piece of uh, timber just through the filling tube just to keep an eye on how far I was getting up that tube because it is quite difficult. There's no uh, you know, pre-warning of when you're going to reach the required amount. So uh, by doing this, I was able to sort of inch my way up through the reservoir there and just basically get it near enough so I could just top it up with a smaller amount and get the level right. It is very important to get the level pretty much perfectly right so that you don't overfill as well. Um, there are some obviously some pressures involved once the oil gets moved around and if there's too much oil there it could cause damage and further problems. After cleaning up any dribbled oil and making sure I've got this as clean as possible I then also had to clean the headstock lid which had been also heavily coated with this sealant. Uh, in this case I was actually able to scrape that off with the scraper and it sort of came off reasonably okay because the powdery residue that, that, that it left was easily kept out of the chamber. Once I had done that I placed the head, headstock cover back on top and bolted it back down. Inside the headstock is a second tank that also needs uh, maintaining and refueling. This particular one has a viewport that's actually located on the side of the lathe just near the chuck and as you can see with mine it's a bit low. It, the actual oil level should be in the middle of the circle. It also takes the same TELUS S2 M32 type. To fill up this particular tank you need to remove this cap which I'm doing so here. It isn't well described in the Colchester manual. I'm not sure why since it's such an important part of your lathe. It is the oil reservoir that, that actually lubricates your gearbox. However, anyway, I didn't actually have enough oil to completely do this, this task in terms of flushing it completely out. So what I've done is I've removed a little bit of the uh, crappy stuff at the bottom of the reservoir just to flush out the worst of it and then I top, topped it up but my intention is to uh, come back and fully flush this and also replace the oil in this reservoir as well. Again I'm just making sure that I've, I've correctly filled this tank to the right level before starting and testing the system and visually getting a verification that all the oil lines are actually working and there's no air locks left inside any of the tubing leading to the headstock or the gearbox. Before closing everything up, I actually did grease uh, the external gears here uh, just with some heavier gauge grease just to refreshen that up as well before locking everything down and getting ready to move on to the carriage. In the saddle of my lathes is the, f the final and third reservoir that I'm dealing with here today. And again, you can see this one's quite low. It takes a different type of oil, so this is, this is the chamber that requires a replacement for the Toner 33 oil that was originally specified in the Colchester manual, and it's to be replaced with the Toner S3 M68 type. It's basically another heavy weigh oil, and while I was not overly concerned about the quality of this oil, it, it, since it drained out fairly clean, it still is a you know good thing to just flush it out and start afresh with some new oil, particularly because I'm also changing types. I've actually got no idea what the original oil was in there, whether they still used uh, Toner 33 or whether they were already using the new uh, S3 M68 type. So finishing up this process is a bit messy of, of course, just cleaning up all the oils and responsibly getting rid of the old oil. However, I'm pretty happy that I've done this because I have now know exactly what's in my machine. So the last thing to do was really just to start it up and uh, put it through its paces just to make sure that again that the carriage was also operating correctly and receiving oil when pumped into the right places. 
Overall, I felt the machine is running smoother and definitely got a little bit more quieter. And that's probably just because it's now been topped up to the right level. Maybe because also the oils themselves were performing better. Anyway, I hope this uh, video has helped somebody out there with a Colchester lathe. And thank you for watching. Bye-bye.